Hi, I'm Simon from Hopewood Turning. The next project that we're doing is going to be an open vase and I'm going to use the 6mm Pro uh, and talk about how we can get this hollowed out. Now it's quite a big piece of wood. I have it safely secured and I'm going to use the half inch bowl gouge and show you a little technique how I rough down larger pieces of work. If you want to learn uh, more about how you mount pieces of wood safely on the lathe, please have a look at my previous videos which talk about these in uh, different stages. So I've set the speed to a safe speed and what I'm going to do is pivot with the large handle and the half inch bowl gouge and just pivot to start cutting. Because it's bouncing around quite a lot I find this quite a safe way to true unbalanced work. Very, very quickly we can start taking material away. We'll move the rest in closer and we can speed up the process. So we're going to do the same again. We're just going to move the rest in and then we're going to get a bit of speed going. Okay, we've turned it round, so there's a bit of a void here. So I think we'll make this the top and this the bottom, and some of this we can start to turn away, but it has some really nice figure in here. So once that's finished, that should look uh, really, really stunning. So I'm gonna start working on the shape. This will be the open top, and it will just be a nice, simple shape vase. I'm just going to get the spigot set with the parting tool. I have the calipers preset, so I'll just make the spigot. We're going to make this quite wide for the capacity of the jaws so we have extra strength. I'm going to use the one-way uh, talon chuck with the serrated edge jaws. And now I'm going to get this mounted up into the chuck. So now we're safely mounted up in the chuck. I'm just going to true this face up and I'm going to do some finishing cuts down here. I'll leave it quite thick at the base to begin with 
and do the main hollowing out. And then I'm a, I might make this thinner and more smaller at the bottom. So it looks more pleasing. Now I'm going to use the straight grinds to do my finishing cuts. Bit more speed. I'm going to use the side bevel and I'm going to come off here to begin with. To get a nice finish on here. Now I'm going to come back Just started to take too much of a deep cut. So I'm gonna go down in two sections. Just pick up the cut. Yeah, very happy with that shape. Maybe a small defect in here. So I might just change the shape slightly to try and get this out. I think I can. So whenever I'm changing the shape, we don't want to sort of work down here. We actually want to start up here so that the curve continues and just tucks in more. And I'm going to use the side bevel here. So side bevel rubbing up here and then just move the handle round until it starts to engage here and then continue. This way you can continue the nice curve. Still have a nice curve. We've just about taken that out, just a little bit more. Perfect, now we've got rid of that defect. I'm gonna leave the strength here to hollow out and then finish by making a small foot. Okay. So double check that everything's nice and tight before we start doing some hollowing. We're now starting to lean over from the chuck and I'm just gonna take this dimple away at the front. We have a little bit of vibration, that's normal. So just adjust your cutting. Okay. Now, because I'm gonna use a force and a bit for drilling out, I'm just gonna put the dimple little cone just on the center. And I'm gonna get my force and bits ready just to take the core out, only about 15, maybe 20 millimeter, and then the tool would work a lot easier to hollow the inside out. Right, so the next stage is just to drill out the center. Um, <clears throat> it's much easier to do this um, when you're using the Pro Carbide tool. It will cut on the center, but if you could bore the center out, it's much quicker. Now I have a set that just goes in the Morse taper. We need to go deeper than this, but never start with a full extension because things will wobble around. So start short, go halfway down, and then I'm gonna add the extension. So important things when using uh, any drilling is to turn the speed down, around to about 800. Otherwise the heat gets too much um, and things start to go wrong and burn out. So 
So always try and keep hold of this part here. We're just going to start off very, very slowly so it runs true. And once you start cutting down, make sure you pull this out to clear the waste. About every inch. If it starts to vibrate, just add some wax and that should, um, <clears throat> not the vibration, I meant the, uh, if it gets too hot and you can smell it sort of burning, just add some wax. So I just put some of this in. Now I'm just gonna add the extension bar. Now I've added the extension bar. We're just gonna work out how deep we want. So I am gonna to say to this position here, and then I'm just gonna add some masking tape. So that position there. Oh, let's just get a bit of masking tape. Like so, yeah, good. Need a bit of wax. Okay, so we've gone to depth. I can take all this apart and then we'll start hollowing. So now I'm gonna use the six mil pro carbide um, and show you how quick it is to hollow out with this. Um, it is a stainless steel bar. This is a stainless steel tip holder and it has a small six millimeter cutter. Um, don't be uh, fooled, it will take timber away very, very quickly. You can buy the tool like this with sleeves or you can pull the sleeves off and add it to either a grub handle or a quick release. To pull the sleeves off, don't sort of pull them off like this. You have to use your fingers like that to actually pull them off. And then you have the option of adding to a handle system so you can tuck under your arm and get more leverage. I think probably um, with the sleeves on is about right for this size. So I'm just showing you the different options, but we're gonna do the standard tool with the sleeves. So we're gonna make sure that we're cutting on the center line. And when you start cutting, you always go over at 45 degrees like so. And then when you're happy with the cut, then you can start to open up. If you go in straight away like this, then it's a heavy cut. So start like this and open up to this. So normally they like slightly faster speeds. So around about 1500 RPM. cuts forward and backwards. So there's no uh, direct way in which one cuts better than the other. Um, but for the sort of finishing cuts, I would always come from center up because you tend to get more control that way and tend to get a better curve. So for general cutting each way, for finishing, I sort of come up from the center up. I think the speed could be slightly faster. Uh, 
and that just seems to be a happy place that it likes to to work at so actually slightly slower there was some vibration but at a faster speed it's working much happier So hopefully you can see how quick that is. We'll just move the rest in a bit closer. At the moment I'm leaving the wall thickness around about 10 millimeter. I'm just concentrating on getting most of the hollowing done and then we'll come back and refine the wall thickness. A little bit deeper, let's get the tool rest completely close. So a good majority of that has been hollowed already. We've probably got about another inch to go at the bottom. Uh, wall thickness, as I say, is about 15 millimeter at the moment. Um, but we can reduce that down um, once we've got the most of the hollowing out. So I've just added a small light, a LED light with a magnet on the back of my rest, um, and then we can see what's going on on the inside. Just trying to find the centre, there we go. I'm just going to stop and clear the shavings. And now we're just going to take a little bit more of the meat away. Yeah, we're there. Okay, so to give you some idea, We've gone down about 150 millimeter, okay? Which is down to this depth here, where we drilled, okay? So it's probably the maximum of this tool with the grips. If you wanted to go deeper than this, then you'd have to take these off and add a handle, and then you could go deeper. Before I actually go ahead and make this thinner, um, it's a good idea just to sand the outside because if you make this thin and it moves slightly, then it's going to be really hard to actually sand the outside. So I'll just show you the first grip with 120. Okay, I'll just go through the grips.
Now one uh, other just quick thing, I, I like to put a nice little chamfer on here and I'm going to do that first be before we do the finishing thinning uh, of the walls. So either with a spindle gouge or a bowl gouge, just line the bevel up. And I'm going to make a nice clean cut. Now we can thin those walls down. I will start um, again with the 6mm Pro Carbide tool. Um, it's really a great tool for just getting material out very, very quickly. So it takes a lot of practice to get a nice smooth finish. So we'll try and get the best finish we can, um, but I'll most likely finish with my Vars Negative Rake Scraper, which will just smooth everything out. So we'll go ahead and reduce that um, by half. <clears throat> Remember before you start, tilt over. It likes a faster speed, so I'm just going to increase the speed slightly. So if we're going quite thin, things most likely start to actually move. You can see it's still quite thick, but there is movement there. So I like to sand this top area first. You can see I was taking more care with the tool. Um, so it's a slightly better finish than just in here, slightly smoother, but it's still not perfect. So at this stage, I could start to use my Vars Negative Rake Scraper which is here. Um, and this is a great tool for just fine tuning, again, um, the cut. And hopefully you can see there, it's really taken the, the finish to the next level um, and is gonna save a lot of sanding. I like to sand that top edge now uh, in case it does move a lot. So we'll just sand this area and then we'll continue down. If you're hand sanding, just remember to turn the speed down so that it's not too fast and builds up too much heat. Um, just get my face mask on. So now I think we can go ahead and just get the rest finished. Um, so we'll just reduce the, the wall thickness down with this tool and then we'll just finish and blend everything in um, with the negative rake vase scraper. Speed up. Again, when you're going down to the end grain, right at the bottom, if you want to have a look in here, just remember to always tilt this over at 45, which is the safe cutting angle. Just find that centre. That's it. Yep, so we've just about blended in there. Now it's time to use the negative rake vase scraper. This tool is in um, a medium grub handle with the blue head, 13 millimeter, um, and it has quite a long reach. It's 
Very, very safe tool to use. Just cuts on the, the center line. You can see the shavings coming off. So with a sharp edge, it will give a really good finish, especially on the end grain. Just going to blend in that shape before the final finishing cut. Bit more at the bottom slight bit here just to blend that in and then we're nearly there pretty much ready for sanding. So now we need to sand the inside of this. Um, it is possible to do that by hand, but you have to be very, very careful. So we'll start off by hand. First, you need to uh, obviously put your mask on, um, but you need to turn the speed of the lathe down. So if you're sanding by hand, it's always a good idea So actually hold your arm like this, make sure your sleeves, nothing too loose. And you can safely sand inside. If it's too small or it's a closed form, then you have to be careful about putting your hand inside. Uh, but we're gonna show the long reach bar for the pro sander. Because we can use the rest, we can actually turn the speed up slightly so this spins. It's possible to sand quickly and easily. You always have to keep an eye on the heat. But it's still a quicker way of sanding than by hand. You can see the amount of dust coming out. Much quicker. But always be aware of the heat. It's good tool, it works really well. Yeah. So we're just gonna finish this off. Um, I'm gonna reduce the foot down, maybe come down with a small foot, something like this, um, part it off, sand the bottom, give it a coat of oil, uh, and then this project's finished. So uh, one little tip, which I would always recommend, if you've done something like this and set out where you might like the foot or the base, it's really hard to see if it's correct like this. So always just take it off the lathe before you finish. 
and just stand it up. And then you can look back and you can see if you're happy with the shape. So uh, it's not looking too bad. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. I got away with it. So um, we'll get it back on, get it sanded, use a skew just to tidy up, and then we can part it off. So just gonna sand this part by hand. With sanding, you normally knock the sharp edge off, so I'm just gonna use a skew to tidy this area up. And we use this this way round, not like that, but like this. Perfect. Um, also a good idea is to get a nice clean cut here, and then we can rest the parting tool and go under, but we know that this edge is nice and clean. just see a slight shadow so just very very quickly that'll be fine once it's oiled so I'm just going to use the parting tool um, to start undercutting got to be very careful if you make it too small this could actually break off so I'm going to take it down to there we can make something to support here um, with the towel stock if we wanted, or we can just cut the last bit off uh, and sand it away. So I'm not gonna go any smaller than that. I'm just gonna get my saw and cut that off. So there's two ways to finish the bottom of this off. Yes, we could just sand with the arbor in here, in a Jacob's chuck, or with a scrap piece of wood, we could mount this like a jam chuck, bring up the towel stock, and you can undercut that more uh, and do a more professional finish. Uh, whichever you prefer. specialised tools for undercutting uh, and making one of those. Um, similarly, if you want to start at the beginning, uh, please check, check out the earlier videos where we started from the beginning uh, from basic hollowing and now working our way up to more difficult projects. <laughs>